Good morning and welcome to our service for Ash Wednesday. Before we begin our service, here are a few announcements. First of all, I want to announce that uh, over this period of Lent, we're going to be having a, a different person each day who will share something about their favourite passage of Scripture. This is a great uh, opportunity for so many of us to get involved over this season, and we're so grateful to those who have come forward and said that they would want to be a part of that. However, if you're still on the fence and would like to get involved, do get in touch with either myself or Terence. We'd love to hear from you. The videos are quite short. Uh, mine was only three and a half minutes, the first one that I've done, so that gives you an idea of how short they can be. Uh, and it's really just talking about uh, a passage of Scripture or a verse uh, that has spoken to you and, and just sharing that with the rest of the parish. So please do uh, get involved in that if you are able to. Online as well, we're going to be doing a Bible study series starting next Wednesday. Uh, many of you will remember uh, the series that we uh, took part in uh, in the first lockdown back in spring 2020 that was run by the Bible Society. It was the Bible Course. And we're now going to be doing another uh, course organized by the Bible Society called Life. Uh, and we're going to be doing it for the next six weeks from next, next Wednesday. Um, and the sessions look at a wide variety of, of different aspects. The, ses the sessions are entitled Still Life, where we look at prayer and the Holy Spirit. Word Life, where we look at scripture. Real Life, where we look at authenticity. Just Life, where we think through uh, issues of compassion. And Whole Life, where we think about what our Christian life means in the everyday and over the weeks, we're going to engage with a video. There's going to be group discussions and there's going to be an encouragement each week to respond as we live out the teachings. We want to encourage as many people as possible to be involved in this. So if you're interested or you want to find out, out, out more, uh, please uh, get in touch with us. You can send an email to terence at sego.co.uk uh, uh, or you can call either one of us to find out more information about that. Later on this evening, we're going to have a second Ash Wednesday service. Uh, this is a, a reflective service with pieces of uh, music, which will be uh, run by our bishop, Bishop David. And then tomorrow, I would invite you to join me for another coffee with the curate. Hopefully, you're not uh, taking off coffee over Lent. But even if you are, I'd invite you to join with me. Uh, and every Thursday thereafter, over this season of Lent, uh, as, as I think through different passages of Scripture. So as we begin our service, let's just take a few moments in silence. Our service this morning is from the Church of Ireland's Book of Common Prayer service for Ash Wednesday. It's a beautiful service with powerful liturgy that reminds us of the importance as we embark on this journey of Lent of our need to meditate upon God's word, to repent and to pray and to prepare. And so I would invite you to join with me during this service. There will be opportunities for you to engage with the liturgy and your responses will appear at the bottom of the screen. And there will be plenty of opportunities for us to meditate upon God's word as we go through this service this morning. So we begin with these words from Psalm 51. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart you will not despise. Lord, have mercy. And these words of introduction from our prayer book. Brothers and sisters in Christ, since early days Christians have observed with great devotion the time of our Lord's passion and resurrection. It became the custom of the church to prepare for this by a season of penitence and fasting. At first, this season of Lent was observed by those who were preparing for baptism at Easter and by those who were to be restored to the church's fellowship from which they had been separated through sin. In course of time, the church came to recognize that by a careful keeping of these days, all Christians might take to heart the call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel and so grow in faith and in devotion to our Lord. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Lord, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance. 
by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. Let us pray for grace to keep Lent faithfully, and we say together, Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we may be truly sorry for our sins and obtain from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now you're going to have the first of our readings, which will be brought to us by Eva. The reading is from Isaiah chapter 58, beginning at verse 1. Shout it aloud, do not hold back, raise your voice like a trumpet, declare to my people their rebellion, unto the descendants of Jacob their sins. For day after day they seek me out, they seem eager to know my ways, as if they were a nation that does what is right, and has not forsaken the commands of its God. They ask me for just decisions, and seem eager for God to come near them. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves, and you have not noticed? Yet on the day of your fasting you do as you please, and exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends in quarrelling and strife, and in striking each other with wicked fits. You cannot fast as you do today, and expect your voice to be heard on high. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen, only a day for people to humble themselves? It is only for bowing one's head like a reed, and for lying in sackcloth and ashes. Is that what you call a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice, and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free, and break every yoke? It is not to share your food with the hungry, and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter. When you see the naked, to clothe them, and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood. Then your life will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help, and he will say, Here am I. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and malicious talk, and if you spend yourselves on behalf of the hungry, and satisfy the needs of the oppressed. Then your light will rise in the darkness, and your night will become like the noonday. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land, and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose water never fails. Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins, and will raise up the age-old foundations. You will be called repairer of broken walls, Restorer of streets with dwellings. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Eva, for that reading. We're now going to hear some more of Psalm 51. I find the Psalms are such a powerful encouragement at all times in life because isn't it true that they cover the whole range of human emotion and experience? Psalms of joy and thanksgiving, Psalms of lament and worry. And so in the Psalms, we find something in Scripture that speaks to us, whatever season of life we may be in. And so these words from Psalm 51 are so appropriate to us as we begin this season of Lent. Have mercy on me, O God, in your great goodness, according to the abundance of your compassion. Blot out my offences. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my faults, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence, and righteous in your judgment. I have been wicked, even from my birth, a sinner when my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth deep within me, and shall make me understand wisdom in the depths of my heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the bones you have broken may rejoice. 
Turn your face from my sins and blot out all my misdeeds. Make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me again the joy of your salvation and sustain me with your gracious spirit. Then shall I teach your ways to the wicked and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from my guilt, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. For you desire no sacrifice, else I would give it. You take no delight in the burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. We're now going to have our second reading, which will be brought to us by Joe. And following that, we will have hymn number 60 from Thanks and Praise. I will sing the wondrous story. The reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, beginning at verse 20. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though we, God were making his appeal through us. We implore you. On Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain, for he says, In the time of my favour I heard you, and in the day of salvation I helped you. I tell you now is the time of God's favour, now is the day of salvation. We put no stumbling block in anyone's path, so that our ministry will not be discredited. Rather, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, in great endurance, in troubles, hardships and distresses, in beatings, imprisonments and riots in hard work, sleepless nights, and hunger, in purity, understanding, patience, and kindness, in the Holy Spirit, and in sincere love, in truthful speech, and in the power of God, with weapons of righteousness, in the right hand, and in the left hand, through glory and dishonour, bad reports and good reports, Genuine, yet regarded as impostors, known, yet regarded as unknown, dying, and yet we live on, beaten, and yet not killed, sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, poor, yet making many riches, and having nothing, and yet possessing everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>
Thank you to Alison and Ruth for leading us in that worship. Now our outreach worker Jim Fleming is going to bring our gospel reading and following that we will have a short reflection from our bishop. The reading is taken from Matthew chapter 6 uh, verses 1 to 6 and then verses 16 to 21. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honoured by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and on the street corners, to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, Go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And verses 16 to 21. When you fast, do not look sombre as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others how they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil in your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen. And your Father who sees what's done in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Today is Ash Wednesday, the first day in Lent, and I'm really looking forward to sharing uh, a brief thought with you each day, just about four to five minutes each day, uh, a thought from the book of the prophet Nehemiah. Lent's a, a wonderful, helpful season, uh, an opportunity for all of us to give space uh, and to set aside some time so that we can lift our, our sights from ourselves from our own concerns, from our own self-preoccupation at times, from our consumeristic uh, worldview, and rather give space to fix our eyes on, on, on Christ, to fix our eyes on God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and to turn our hearts towards the needs of those around us. Lent's an opportunity for us to allow our hearts to be softened, to allow our concerns to be turned towards the needs and the wants and the hopes and the aspirations of those around us. The first of our readings and thoughts from this book of the prophet Nehemiah do just that. The opening verses of Nehemiah guide our hearts away from ourselves and towards those who find that they're caught up in, in, a, in a world where they're very much in trouble, a, a world where they feel shame, a, a, and in a world where they really need someone to provide leadership and to provide them with help. So we see in these verses that I'm about to read, walls that are broken down, gates that have been burned. And we're living in a world and living 
in a society where we need to lift our eyes towards broken down walls and towards a work of rebuilding. We need to lift our sight towards gates that have been burned, leaving many fair game for loan sharks, fair game for drug dealers, uh, fair game for those that would take advantage of them. So please listen to these words, these opening verses, verses 1 and 3 of Nehemiah chapter 1. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah. Now it happened in the month of Chislev, in the twentieth year, as I was in Susa, the citadel, that Hananiah, one of my brothers, came with certain men from Judah. And I asked them concerning the Jews who escaped, who had survived the exile, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said to me, The remnant there in the province who had survived the exile is in great trouble and shame. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down, and its gates are destroyed by fire. Throughout the history of the church, God has raised up individuals and God has raised up whole congregations who would take it upon themselves to fight for the poor, to fight for those who were living in a, in a, in a circumstance where the walls around them were broken, to fight for and to care for those who were overlooked and despised. He even has raised up whole churches that have taken that mission very much to heart. Elizabeth Fry, for example, uh, campaigned tirelessly for reforms in the prisons of her day. George Mueller recognized the needs of orphans in his day and did something about it, setting up orphanages. In our day, for example, just one example might be John Kirby, who became aware of the, the plight of those whose lives were being ravaged by debt and who set up an organization called Christians Against Poverty. Whoever we are, God would turn our eyes and our hearts from our sometimes small world so that we would be focused on the needs of the world around us. And he would birth in our hearts a concern for people around us. Nehemiah ha had a great job in Babylon. He had security. He had plenty. He lived in a, in a wonderful city in Persia. He lived in an environment where he was surrounded by great buildings and beautiful gardens. But he's not wrapped up in himself. He inquires about the Jews back in Jerusalem. They're a remnant. They're a people who are out there. They're, they're, they're over there. But, but Nehemiah fixes his gaze and allows the Lord to turn his heart towards their needs. My prayer for all of us this Lent is that we would become a people more and more whose hearts are lifted towards heaven and towards God and whose lives become focused on loving him and loving our neighbour and putting in place ministries that will serve the need of the least and that will reach the lost. I'm going to end each of these uh, little thoughts which we've now come to the end of the first one. You'll be shocked that, I've, that I'm so brief. They are going to be brief, each one of them. And I'm going to end with a prayer each time. And today I'm simply going to end by praying the collect for Ash Wednesday. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And Lord God, I pray that your Spirit, your Holy Spirit, would come upon us wherever we are right now. And Lord, that we would begin to see around us walls that are broken down, gates that have been destroyed, and Lord, people that are in need. 
And Lord, that you would turn our hearts individually, and that you would turn the very focus of your church towards those around us who need to experience the love of God and the kindness of God and the grace of God. Lord, in these days, may your church make a real, real difference in the society and in the communities where you have placed us. So pour out your Spirit upon us, Lord, we pray. Right now, right now, speak into our lives. And right now, birth in our hearts a concern for some of the needs that break your heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Bishop David, for that reflection. Now we enter into a time of penitence and confession. Let us now call to mind our sin and the infinite mercy of God. As we reflect upon how we have fallen short of God's standard, we hear these words of the commandments that set forth to us the expectations that God has of us as we seek to live a good life and to follow him. Hear these commandments which God has given to his people and take them to heart. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods but me. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. You shall not make for yourself any idol. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. You shall not dishonor the name of the Lord your God. You shall worship him with reverence and awe. Remember the Lord's day and keep it holy. Christ is risen from the dead. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. Lord, have mercy on us and write these, your laws, in our hearts. Honour your father and your mother. Live as servants of God. Honour all people. Love your brothers and sisters in Christ. You shall not commit murder. Be reconciled to your brother and sister. Overcome evil with good. You shall not commit adultery. Know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. You shall not steal. Be honest in all that you do and care for those in need. You shall not be a false witness. Let everyone speak the truth. You shall not covet anything which belongs to your neighbor. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Love your neighbor as yourself, for love is the fulfilling of the law. Lord, have mercy on us and write all these, your laws, in our hearts. Let us pray. God, the Father, creator of heaven and earth, have mercy on us. God, the Son, redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, giver of life, have mercy on us. Holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, three persons in one God, have mercy on us. Save us, good Lord, from all sin and wickedness, from pride, hypocrisy, and conceit, from envy, hatred, and malice, and all uncharitableness. Save us, good Lord, from sins of thought, word, and deed, from the lusts of the flesh, from the deceits of the world, and the snares of the devil. Save us, good Lord. From fire, storm, and flood, from disease, pestilence, and want, from war and murder, and from dying unprepared, save us, good Lord. From all false doctrine, from hardness of heart, from contempt of your word and commandment, and from the evil of schism, save us, good Lord. Save us, Lord Christ, by the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your birth, childhood, and obedience, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation. Save us, Lord Christ. By your ministry and work, 
and word, by your mighty acts of power and by your preaching of the kingdom, save us, Lord Christ. By your agony and trial, by your cross and passion, and by your precious death and burial, save us, Lord Christ. By your mighty resurrection, by your glorious ascension, and by your sending of the Holy Spirit, save us, Lord Christ. Saviour of the world, forgive our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may amend our lives accordingly to your holy word and share with all your people the joys of your eternal kingdom. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Make our hearts clean, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. We say together these words of confession. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. And so hear these words of absolution. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Beth will lead us in a time of intercession. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we enter into this season of Lent, we ask for your mercy, Lord. We confess our sins to you. We have fallen short of your glory, and without your grace we would be lost. Be near to us, help us, and keep us close to you. May your Holy Spirit work on us, give us a caring heart, to remember those in trouble, those who suffer as we sit in warm homes with food in the cupboard and complain about trivial things that don't matter. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, look down in pity on all who are facing hard times at the moment, such suffering in this time. For the hungry Lord, please help the food banks and enable people to get food that they need for their families. We pray for the homeless, that your Holy Spirit will flood them with warmth, security, protection and strength. In Jesus' name. And we declare Psalm 46, that you shall be their refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Lord, we remember refugees, those making perilous journeys, fleeing from conflict and persecution, particularly for children, traveling in extreme dangerous conditions. We pray for wisdom for all those in authority who make decisions that impact refugees, for leaders to tackle the root causes of the refugees' crisis. Lord, bring stability in the countries men and women and children are fleeing from. We pray especially for Syria, Afghanistan, Nigeria, Libya and other affected nations. Lord, help organisations, churches and communities who are working tirelessly to care for refugees. Pray that they would be given wisdom and energy as they respond to families and children in great need. We lay before you those who are imprisoned and persecuted simply for their faith and refusing to deny your name. So many, in so many different parts of the world. Help and support, protect and save. Comfort, encourage and strengthen 
each and every one in their time of trial. Free them from their torment, just as you saved Peter, your apostle, from the prison cell. We pray for those who have no regard for anyone but self, who put no value on human life, for nations and individuals who abuse and kill. Restrain their actions, Lord, and keep them from hurting and harming by anger, frustration, greed and selfishness. Help them to know that life is precious and reach into their hearts to change attitudes and reveal yourself to them. Lord, bless those who help to care for those who are ill, in distress, grieving, feeling lost and hopeless. We think of care workers, hospital workers, community workers, police, fireman, ambulance men, neighbours and even friends. Help us to be that sense of hope and light in dark times, that others would see the warmth of your love and grace. May we bring your words and actions into every situation we find ourselves in. God of grace and love, to you we bring our thanks and praise. To a world that searches, you are the lamp that shines. To a world that is hungry, you are food that sustains. To a world that suffers, your hope of release. To a world that is broken, you are the one who restores. To a world full of hate, you are love that forgives. To a world that denies, you are truth that endures. To you, we bring our thanks and praise. And now, together, we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you to Beth and indeed thanks to everyone who was part of our service this morning. Before we come to sing our final hymn, I just want to give us an opportunity to pause and to reflect. As we enter this season of Lent, we are encouraged through the words of this service to do so in a way that is mindful of the things that we have done wrong, that is mindful of our need to come in penitence before God and to seek his forgiveness, and is mindful of our call to prepare our hearts for this season. Many of us will give up things like chocolate or coffee or a wide variety of different things. Some of us may even take up certain disciplines over this next period of Lent. But I want to just in this pause encourage us to think about how we might invite God to move within us, but how we might invite his spirit to move through us in this season of Lent. So we take a few moments in the silence to pause and to reflect. Let us pray. Amen. So our final hymn, hymn number 247, When I Survey, is a hymn that calls us to look ahead to the end of this season and what follows, of course, Easter and the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So we sing these powerful and poignant words of hymn 247, When I Survey.
So as our service for Ash Wednesday draws to a close, hear these words of encouragement and of blessing. Lord our God, grant us grace to desire you with our whole heart, that so desiring we may seek and find you, and so finding may love you, and so loving may hate those sins from which you have delivered us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so may Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, and to take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.